Hey, yo everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. And today I would like to sit down and talk about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Suicide Squad. The two most recent releases in the DC Cinematic Universe. Now, you're probably asking, Andrew, it's, it's been for Evskis, like, these movies have been out for a while now. Everyone's kind of said their opinion on this, and everyone's already made their opinion on this, so well, why are you even bothering talking about it right now? Why not just let it kind of fall to the wayside and forget about it? Well, the, that's an absolutely valid question, and the reason being is, well, my opinions have changed kind of on both films and gone up and down. I've seen multiple viewings of Batman v Superman, and I've seen a couple of viewings of Suicide Squad, and my initial intake of one movie isn't necessarily what it is now, which is, says a lot about a film, either in a good way or bad way, the fact that opinions can be changed so quickly and easily. In addition to that, I've had opportunities to talk to people who've also seen the films and kind of plugged in their own opinions and, of course, watch movie reviews and have them plug in their own opinions. So, And seeing that I haven't put up a video in, well, for Evskis, um, I still have a lot of videos that I need to do, I figured a good way to get kind of back into things is to talk about this because, well, it's Batman v Superman and it's Suicide Squad. And to say that I don't have at least a vested interest in these is a complete lie, because, well, I do. Other than the fact they're DC movies and they star some of my favorite characters, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, uh, they're kind of, well, going to be big for setting up the universe that is the DC Cinematic Universe. Whether you like what happened or whether you don't, it's coming, baby girl. Like... These movies are coming, and these are the these are the movies that kind of set the tone. So, might as well start things off, and we'll talk about Batman v Superman first, because well, it's arguably the more controversial of the one. And I'm not even going to bother going into story because we know it. Batman vs Superman, Doomsday comes down. Oh, spoiler alert! Sorry, I should have said that. Everyone should have seen the movie by now. And Superman dies. Plain, flat, and simple. And Lex Luthor goes a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But, what I really want to talk about is the good, the bad, and how I ultimately felt about it. And I figured I might as well start off with some good stuff, shall we? Number one, I thought Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman was really good. And I think this is generally well received by a bunch of people. With the exception of one minor thing, which I'll get into, the, well it's not minor, it's actually pretty major. But with the exception of one thing, which I'll get into when I talk about the bad... But I thought kicked ass as Batman. He had the look, he had the feel, he was fast, the fight scenes were fucking awesome. Like, come on, when he was in that warehouse and he was just beating the shit out of people, I'm like, that's comic Batman right there. That's as close as we're going to get. It's like a mix between comic Batman and Arkham Batman. Like, this is awesome. So, overall, his portrayal, I think, was very well done. And there was a certain distinctiveness or uh, distinction or regalness that Ben Affleck brought to the role. Uh, particularly, this stood out to me in the scene when uh, they're having the funeral for uh, Superman. You just see Bruce Wayne kind of standing there. Um, and I don't know, there was just something about it that said, hey, that's Bruce Wayne. Is it a perfect portrayal of Batman? No, but for me, I'm never going to get that. Because, well, it's impossible. Um, but Ben Affleck's Batman was pretty awesome. Let's talk about other things that are pretty awesome. Wonder Woman. Throughout the whole entire film, Wonder Woman was awesome. Um, Gal Gadot did a great job of portraying Wonder Woman. I actually got to meet her at uh, Rhode Island Comic Con. I got, uh, I'll show you real quick. Uh, I got to meet a couple people, but I got to meet her and I got this signed by her, which is pretty cool. Um, they were selling this, well, a vendor was selling this. I guess this is his art or his original art, and I uh, got a signature from her on that, and uh, it was pretty awesome. And you know what else is awesome? It's her portrayal of Wonder Woman. From how she acts, to how she moves, to just the fight scene. I think the fight scene really encaptures it a lot. When she just comes down, the braces are there, and then she puts her hands down, and says, it's Wonder Woman. Um, and the trailer for Wonder Woman looks great. Like I think everything that was done with Wonder Woman was pretty awesome. Uh, the fight scene at the end with the Trinity versus Doomsday, unbelievable. I'll do a Donald Trump. It was unbelievable. Five-star, unbelievable fight. 
It was really a good fight, and it kind of portrays what would happen if the Trinity actually fought Doomsday. There was a, um, someone made a kind of fan-made trailer movie series, and I forget what it is. It's like, basically the death of Superman, and they took clips from Nolan's Dark Knights films, and uh, Brandon Ruth's Superman, and the Hulk, and I guess they had some actress play Wonder Woman, and they kind of mishmashed and edited and photoshopped and pasted and did this really cool video series. You can find it on YouTube somewhere. I wish I remember it, but of the Trinity versus Doomsday. And it was really just like Superman gets killed, and then it's down to Wonder Woman and Batman, and the two of them are fighting Doomsday. Batman is playing the whole entire time, and then he gets out and he uses weapons, and Wonder Woman fights Doomsday hands on. It's kind of like that. That was kind of a cool thing to see. So. It kind of some and it, it you know this was a long time ago like this was before Man of Steel this was man, when Brandon Ruth was still Superman technically no way but um and th what was really cool about it is the Trinity stands together even even if one of them falls they stand together it was really cool to see them stand together and it was really cool to see how they all contributed Wonder Woman was in the forefront with Superman of course but Batman even though I mean he's motherfucking Batman even though he doesn't have the superpowers that everyone else did he was instrumental in defeating Doomsday even if it's just shooting one kryptonite canister of dust like it was cool to see them all fight and again Batman didn't go toe to toe with Doomsday he used this airship he used the bat wing and then he was just dodging bullets the whole entire time literally like grappling hooking out of the way but the final fight scene between Doomsday and the rest of them was pretty cool. And I even liked Doomsday. Granted, he was not Doomsday with raggedy Hulk Hogan hair and fucking tusks coming out. Um, he did look pretty cool once the transformations were going through. And it was fucking beautiful at the end when Superman went up against Doomsday and sacrificed himself. A lot of people were like, they shoehorned in the death of Superman. How did they shoehorn it in? Like, the death of Superman was a stretched out, dragged out series of comics about Superman dying. Like, literally, it wasn't much to shoehorn in. Like, it was kind of cool that they put that in there, and I think it sets up things really well. And uh, seeing Superman pierce him, and then the... the you know, from the background, great cinematography. Seeing from the background, this giant monster kind of encompassing Superman. And then just stabbing him. Superman using the last of his breath to push himself forward. Securing the fact he's going to die. And Seb's doomsday. Fucking fantastic. When I first saw this with my wife, my wife cried. My wife doesn't cry at shit like this. She cries at romantic comedies and stuff that is touching and feeling. But no, Superman died and she cried. Superman was a big part of her childhood, so maybe that's the case. I kind of saw it coming. I'm like, oh, Doomsday, yeah, Superman's gonna die. And I didn't say anything to her, but it was a fucking cool thing to have in there. I don't think it was shoehorned in, because really, what was missing from the death of Superman that really needed to be in the film? Booster Gold getting the shit beat out of him? I mean, there wasn't really much. The death of Superman was one big fight. So, I enjoyed the fight between the Trinity. Despite what a lot of people say, I did not mind Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Now, the key word is, as I said, I did not mind him. At the same time, I didn't think he was overwhelmingly great. I would have taken some other people, but the eccentricness was actually kind of charming, to say the least. And I do like a few scenes, particularly the one where he's on top, uh, when he's on the, the skyscraper. I think it's called Problems Up Here. We got problems up here. I have the soundtrack, so that's what the song was. And when Superman flies up and they have the little confrontation, really, really kind of cutesy. And uh, I also like to see that the fact that Batman was kind of a detective in this, which, because he's the world's greatest detective. So, I mean, it needs to happen. So, those are kind of the good things that I have to say. Let's talk about bad. Uh, and let's talk about the biggest bad. The bad that literally moves this one full letter grade down for me. Maybe me personally, maybe not other people, but Batman kills in this film. And it's not like, like fucking Batman Returns when he puts a bomb in some guy's pants and kicks him down and then the guy could have died. No, he just mauls through people. Like, he tears through them. Now, the warehouse fight scene, you can kind of like chalk it up as, did he really kill anyone? Because if you look at it, you could be like, well, that guy didn't have to go for the grenade that Batman threw out of his hand. 
or the guy didn't have to use the flamethrower that Batman just shot, but boy, yeah, when he's in the bat plane and when he's in the bat car, he just moles people through. And that hurts me a bit, because Batman doesn't kill. In my opinion, he just doesn't kill. He shouldn't. That's one of the things that make Batman stand out. Now, you can't attest the argument with this. Well, Andrew, Batman kills in every film. And he kind of does. And whether it's him laying down bombs in the factory and Batman... The 1980 film, or tossing people off the fucking uh, clock tower, or if it's in Batman Returns when he blatantly puts a bomb in someone's pants and kicks them over into a ditch, or if it's in Batman and uh, uh, Batman Forever when he throws the coins, which very much so kills maybe secondary, but kills Two Face, uh, or if it's in the Nolan films where he, maybe he may not directly kill people, but Boy, is he just a dick and he lets people die. Like, fuck, Batman doesn't let people die. So, I mean, it, him killing was a humongous problem for me. I've eventually grown to live and accept it, and I'm sure they're not going to do it anymore. Uh, but boy, the, the killing was just... It was terrible. Terrible. Um... Uh, the extended edition did a very good job for the plot, and I think the director's cut extended edition you should see over the original film. Boy, does it make things better. It explains things so much better. It makes things so much better. But you know what kills me is how the plot was set up. Not the fact that Lex trying to pit Superman and Batman against each other. Like, shit, that shit should happen. Like, there should be a reason. But the reason for Superman fighting Batman is just ludicrous. His mother's been captured. Go get Batman, and I'll set her free. If you don't, I'll kill her. And it kind of started off the way it should. Superman would be like, yo, Batman, I know you want to fight, but, like, yo, broski, uh, can you help me save my mom? And then Batman just says, attack him, and then, like, that Superman's like, you know what, I'm just going to kill you. Like, fuck it. Like, if that really happened in the comics, they would actually, even if it was the first meeting, like, if Superman said, yo, my mom, she's going to die, then, like, Batman would have been like, okay, uh, we'll figure this out. And they did, eventually, but, like, dude, they had to fight the whole entire time? This is what I would have done, okay? And you could have thrown in some Dark Knight Returns kind of uh, quotes in there. Have Lex Luthor be part of the U.S. Congress, Senate, or have him be the president or whatever. And in that, he says to Superman, like, listen, you got to prove yourself to the American people. Yeah. Bring in this vigilante. And Superman goes to bring in Batman because he's ordered by the president. Because it ties into Superman's story. He needs to prove he's part of this this world. And it's that conflict that Superman's having with himself. And then he goes and brings in Batman. And then you can have some memorable quotes like, If it wasn't me, it'll be someone else. And then Batman can say, Who do they send after you? Or when he's beating the shit out of Superman, he's like, I want you to remember saying something. I know you're years to come in all your private moments, the one man that beats you. And after, like, they have their fight, you see a big explosion in the background, Luthor goes crazy, and Doomsday comes out, and the two of them are like, let's be super friends. Sounds good, old chump. And they go off and they fight off against Doomsday. I mean, right there, that plot is a thousand times better than what went on. Simpler? Yeah, but still a thousand times better. Again, that doesn't mean the plot for Batman v Superman is terrible. The irregular theatrical release is terrible, but the director's cut makes things a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 the plot could have been a lot better. And here's the thing that really kills me. I liked Superman in the film for the most part. I liked the conflict and the struggle, but it didn't feel like Superman. And let me tell you why. What would have really helped this film is take, like, moments from Superman comics and have it show up in the film. One moment in particular, and one of the best moments of Superman ever, is when he, in All-Star Superman, there is a girl uh, who is about to jump off a building, and she's crying, and she's contemplating it, and then Superman, and I'm choking up just talking about it. Superman flies up behind her, and he basically says, you know, your doctor said that you need to help. Help us here. Just... A small thing, a Superman stopping someone from committing suicide. That's Superman. And they should have had, it would have taken like three seconds, like literally, maybe ten, ten. You could have sacrificed ten seconds, and you could have put that clip in there with all the other clips of him saving the fucking shuttlecraft, or him like saving people who have the tsunami going on. Like, those are the touching moments that make Superman Superman. So I would have very much liked that. Uh, and then, in addition to that, uh, the the film that we got, and I go back to this, it's not the film that we should have got. 
should have been the director's cut. Fuck the time. It should have been the time. And we just didn't get it. Um, and it pisses me off because I left the theater feeling, oh, that was it? And then I watched the director's cut. I'm like, that was it. That should have been it. Um, and the inclusion of the Justice League, looking back on it now, it's not bad, but I would have liked to see more of them. And the fact that they don't have Green Lantern in the cinematic universe, unacceptable. My boy, Hal, needs to be part of the Justice League. On a whole, though, my opinions for Batman and Superman has grown more favorable over time the more I watch it. Um, another thing that should have been taken away, the nightmare sequence didn't need to be happening. But my opinion for Batman v Superman has become more favorable over time. I would still give it like a B rating at best, like a 3 out of 5 star. Um, there's just so much working against it, but at the same time, there's so much that's working for it, too. I think a lot of people overlook the good when they're too busy looking at the bad. Hopefully, it's a good building block for the DC Cinematic Universe, but I'm going to say something controversial. Marvel puts out some good films, but I would take Batman v Superman over a ton of their films. I would take it over Iron Man 2 and 3. I would take it over the... Uh, I'm going to get flack for this, and I'm going to be called a fanboy. I would take it over Avengers Age of Ultron. I would take it over all Thor films. I would take it over... Whew, yeah, I would take it over most. Some of the Captain America films. Well, I would take it over Captain America Civil War. Civil War was kind of disappointing. Um, and maybe Winter Soldier. Captain America 1 is still really fantastic. But, I, I mean, it was a good film. It wasn't great. It didn't blow things away. And that's the thing. There was so much hype and anticipation. Because it's literally Batman v Superman. It's like Mama Hamada Lee went up against Mike Tyson. Or, uh, I don't know. Fuck. I don't know, it's like if Mario fought Link or Captain Picard and Kirk, which did kind of happen, but in a different way. But, like, two iconic people coming together, and everyone kind of understood it. So that's my general opinion and feelings on that. Let's talk Suicide Squad. Boy, let's talk Suicide Squad. For the longest time, I felt as though DC always needed that other team. Like, Marvel has the Avengers, and they have the X-Men. The X-Men is kind of like their edgier team. And for me and DC, we never really had that. We had things that came close, like Teen Titans was, or Titans, during the 80s and 90s. And then you kind of had the Outsiders, but not really. But it really turned out that Suicide Squad is becoming DC's second premier team, and a good one at that. You have a great cast in there in the comics. And I'm talking about comics. With Amanda Waller being like the fucking leader, with Deadshot in there, and Harley Quinn, I mean, and El Diablo, and Captain Boomerang, and all the other miscellaneous people that jump in from time to time. <laughs> On a whole, the Suicide Squad is turning out to be a, a really cool team that's building a lot of momentum, so much so that they're having Justice League vs. Suicide Squad as their big event comic in um, DC Rebirth, which reminds me I need to go out and get my comic sometime soon because issue 2 is out there. But, um, here's the thing. I went into Suicide Squad with neutral expectations, and a lot of people are going to kind of be like, really, when I say this? But... It actually blew me away. It was a really fun film. Now, that's not to say it doesn't have its its problems, but let's just talk. Casting was great. Harley Quinn, Dead Shot, they were all pretty cool. Rick Flagg was pretty cool. Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, spot on. Like, so many good scenes in there. The fight scenes are fun. Um, the only real problem I have with the film, and this is what I would change, is the story. The, the, the whole going up against the Chantress, not what should have happened. This is what should have happened. It should have been more like that director DVD DC animated film, uh, Batman Assault on Arkham, where the Suicide Squad are sent into Arkham, and they have to take down the Joker who's taken over Arkham. Like, that would have been a really great film. Because then you have the Joker as the main antagonist, you have the Suicide Squad going in there, you have the conflict between Harley and Joker, and then you can also see some of the bad villains, like, oh my god, there's Mr. Freeze, or holy shit, look over there, there's a Riddler. Like, it would have been kind of cool to see that. And saying that, oh, I still thoroughly enjoy Suicide Squad, um, and I would give it a 4 out of 5. 
I don't have as much to say about it as I do Batman v Superman because in my mind it's not as controversial as a film. Is it a fantastic superhero film? No, I would still take Captain America, Civil, uh, the uh, first Avenger over it or Iron Man 1 over it. I think those films are superior and I would take all the Nolan films all day, every day, face, neck, and chest over almost every comic film. I mean, the Nolan films were just fantastic, but Putting that aside, Suicide Squad really didn't have too many bad things about it. And I had a discussion with a couple of people about this. And um, a lot of people were in dismay about how much they disliked it. And I'm like, well, I can see where you're coming from. But, like, it's just to have fun. Like, I'd rather have the film and not have the film. Because the film is at least fun. And the music was great. Like, they got some pretty good songs on there. So... That's my general opinion on uh, Suicide Squad. Now, with that said, the DC Cinematic Universe is growing, is building, is changing. And with that said, that means we're getting more films. And, of course, my girl Wonder Woman is coming up next. So, I'm really... The trailers have all looked good. It's all looked fantastic. But that's just the thing. The trailers. Batman v Superman's trailers look fantastic. Captain America Civil War trailers look fantastic. Like, these don't necessarily entail that these films are going to be fantastic, but I have high hopes for my girl Wonder Woman because it looks really good. But I mean, ultimately, what are your opinions on things? Like, how do you feel about Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad? Are you as torn as I am, or are you just kind of like, fuck it? Or are you like, oh my god, Batman Superman? Like, tell me what you think. I, I would love to know. Um, with that said, I'm going to end this video here. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy holidays to everyone. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic New Year. Andrew saying peace out for now.